Hi there, I've been looking forward to making this video. Um, as most of you probably already realize, I'm learning as I go here, and I'm just sharing my experiences with you. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next step, and I'm looking right now at making myself some corn liquor, some corn whiskey. And uh, this is something I've been researching a great deal on, and I must admit that I get rather confused. For starters, most of the places where I go to for a recipe on uh, corn uh, whiskey, they say you have to put the corn in and the, and the barley and all that sort of stuff, and then also to put sugar in to step up the volume output of alcohol. Well, I started thinking, okay, the old school moonshiners never did that. They didn't put sugar in. They used corn because corn was cheaper than sugar. And I thought, I'll keep on looking until I find a recipe which actually gives me um, you know, just for corn and uh, no sugar. And I found one, it was actually at Claw Hammer. I'll put the link in the description below. Um, but one thing started biting me about this. Um, why did so many people want to put sugar in with their corn whiskey? So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna try the exercise. I'm gonna try and make uh, a corn whiskey without sugar. And then at the very end, I'm going to determine what the alcohol level is by using the hydrometer. And that's going to determine whether or not I put any sugar in. But all in all, it's going to be an interesting journey for us. Okay, just briefly before we start, um, this is a, a very simple recipe. I've got the proportions so I know what I can do. I've got five kilos of corn. Uh, this recipe calls for 3.9 kilos, uh, but I've got the proportionate difference for the uh, malted barley so I can actually step it up a little bit. Now I'm going to do it in three batches because <laughs> I have a 19 litre boiler over on the stove there and uh, that's not going to be sufficient for the whole lot. So I'll do it in three batches. So um, uh, we'll, I'll be breaking to and from different scenes and cutting to and from different scenes for you. But the, the formula is simple um, for five gallons or 18.9 or 19 litres of water. There's 8.5 pounds of uh, corn maize or 3.9 kilos, 1.5 pounds of crushed malted barley uh, or 0.68 of a kilo. And what I'm going to be doing, I'm breaking it down proportionately, uh, so I'm putting smaller quantities in to match the smaller quantities of corn. But um, the interesting point about this is I thought you had to boil it. Some places do recommend boiling it, but an awful lot don't. They say get the uh, temperature up to 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 73.8. And as soon as you reach that 73.8, add the corn in, stirring it, and then turn off the heat. Yes, turn off the heat. And then it says, uh, just keep on stirring it for a while. And uh, when the temperature comes down to 66 degrees, then add the barley. Stir that, and then you leave it go for about 90 minutes. Uh, while it does its job. And then all you need to do is wait for it to cool down and uh, you've got your all your st uh, starches uh, transferred into sugar. So, interesting. I'll go through what we've got here. Um, I've got my barley and cracked corn. Uh, I bought it as cracked corn. I ran it through a grinder to actually make it even more fine. And uh, the, the barley, I ran it through the grinder as well just to crack it. Right, so here's the difference. They say just crack barley and you can actually uh, grind up uh, the corn into a, a maize or a, a flour, whatever you want. Um, temperature control, necessary. At the end, I'm going to determine what the alcohol level is or specific gravity is, and that's going to determine whether or not I put sugar in. Because um, I think I was watching some places on the internet and they say it's a shame to actually go to the extent of making all this and not maximising the yeast potential. <laughs> That didn't say very much about what the alcohol level is of just a corn wash, <laughs> a corn mash. Um, interesting product, uh, tincture of iodine. Uh, that I'm going to test the starch content. And it's interesting because um, I'll, get a, I'll, I'll get some of the liquid. If it's, the corn has actually um, dissipated all of its starch, I'll put some, a sample of that, put a drop of uh, iodine in there, it'll go black. Now, once the, the barley has done its job, I'll get a drop of liquid, I'll put some of the iodine in, and it should go yellow. And so that's the difference. So, a very interesting tool. Tell me whether or not the, the, male, uh, the barley's done its job. So, step one, um, I'm gonna turn on the water now, 
and uh, then I'm going to get into putting this in when it reaches the first target temperature of 73.8. Well, we've reached our target temperature. It's now time to slowly put in the corn mixture. We've reached uh, 73.8 degrees. So stirring it to make sure it doesn't burn. You'll notice on the wall that I have just turned off the switch to the stove, so we don't want that to burn at all. So, okay, put that in and stir it for another five, maybe 10 minutes until uh, you're reasonably comfortable that you've mixed it in properly. Then you've got to wait for it to reduce in temperature until it reaches 66 degrees. Now stir it occasionally to thicken it up, uh, to stir it all up. But when it reaches 66 degrees, that's the time when you put in the malted barley. Now you can see here the water has actually thickened up slightly. Now it's not turned into a soup, but it has thickened up and we've reached the temperature. So now we put in the molten barley. Okay, stir it all in. As you can see, we're doing it here, stirring it all in. Now, I might add, at this particular point, I did work out that I had to double the amount of barley. I did this by reheating it and added more barley to it. That to make sure I got all of the starch out of the corn. Okay, you put the barley in, put the lid on, and let it sit there for 90 minutes, taking the lid off every five or 10 minutes and giving it a stir. So uh, that now enables you to have a mixture that you can actually filter into a barrel. When it's settled, you actually have this particular result that's left. Now this is the result of three lots of corn. Now, I was rather disappointed in the fact that it's that much for three lots of corn, but it depends on how strong it is. So okay, I'm gonna siphon this out. You can see down the bottom, we actually have the sediment. I let this settle so the sediment goes down to the bottom of the barrel. So siphon all of the clear stuff out. That's the stuff that I want to actually add yeast to. I'm gonna throw the sediment away. And uh, then we actually go through and we can now test to see how strong this mixture is. I'm talking about the density of the sugar. I'm just getting the last few bits and pieces out there. But it um, depends on how strong this is. Now, what's the density of the sugar? Yeah, fair enough, it's half a barrel, but how much is the uh, specific gravity and uh, how dense is this particular item? So uh, let's find out, shall we? Okay, so I've got my hydrometer ready and I'm going to measure the specific gravity. And it would be great if it was around about, for that size, we want it to be, um, oh, good gracious, around about 15 to 20% um, alcohol by volume comparison. So we're gonna find out now. And this is where I become slightly disappointed. Putting this, the, uh, the hydrometer in now. And what's interesting is this reads now 1.045, which relates to 6% alcohol by volume. Now, based on the amount of liquid in that barrel, that should give me about 1.4 litres of 40% strength alcohol. By the time I've taken out tops and tails, it should be less than a litre. So that's a little bit disappointing. Answer, put more sugar in. That's the reason why they did it in the first place, because the results are pretty poor. Okay, so we're now giving it a sufficient water to reach the top of that barrel on the left there, and I'm putting five kilos of sugar in. Incidentally, I did actually put another kilo in after the camera had stopped. Because now what we're doing is we're building it up to a specific gravity or a set alcohol by volume, what we can expect. Okay, so now it's mixed thoroughly. You don't pour it into the barrel unless it's mixed thoroughly. So it's now mixed thoroughly. All we have to do is integrate that sugar water with the corn and barley mix. So, so, so still a little bit low. I want to bring that up a little bit, but we've still got another task that we actually have to do. Now we need to increase the temperature. It's still cold. It's around about 20, 22 degrees. So you can see what I've done here. I've put a heating strip on it and uh, I've actually put a thermometer on the front and now topping it up to where I want my final end product to be. So just putting it up a little bit, it's already mixed up. Uh, so now I can mix it even further to make sure the water is actually mixed up properly, uh, leaving space for the, the fermentation to happen. So now we're gonna check the specific gravity again. Okay, so it should be theoretically around about 14, 15% plus based on the amount of sugar that I put in. So we're about to find out exactly how much um, is actually in this. We're putting the hydrometer in. We can now work out 
roughly what the alcohol content is going to be. And it works out, good news, to around about 16% alcohol by volume. And that's going to mean I have a reasonable amount of volume in my production. So that's good. Okay, so we're now waiting for the temperature to rise and making sure it's stirred up properly. And uh, now we just simply sit back and wait. Now here you see the waste product. This is the corn and the barley that I filtered out. It gives a huge amount of volume. And what surprises me, I looked it up on the internet. If you want to actually use corn only, you probably have to look, look, use around about 20, 30 kilos of the stuff to actually get a reasonable production. That to me is a little bit impractical. Well, we're finally getting around to adding the yeast to this wash and I'm very anxious to see how it develops. A very new experiment. It's taken a long time to get to this stage. This is day three and I was starting to put this together around about one o'clock this afternoon but I had to wait, as you can see I've got two needle strips here, I had to wait until it came up to around about 30 degrees so that the yeast can actually work. I'm using Lalvin EC 118 it's supposed to be extremely good yeast, uh, it's a little 50 gram pack and I have been activating that and uh, it's starting to bubble up nicely only very slightly but that's good because it was dehydrated to start with and we need to actually make sure that the yeast was rehydrated so I put a little bit of extra sugar inside there too to allow the yeast to um, have a bit of nutrient to start working alright let's just double check my trusty thermometer um, I've got a, a thermometer gauge on the front which gives me a pretty good idea about what temperature it is. But this says it's 29.4, 29.5. Now according to the website, Lalvin say that they want their, their yeast to work somewhere between 30, 32, 33 degrees. So I th suggest it's probably in the right area. Now before I add the yeast and other stuff, there's a couple of things I'm going to do. I'm going to check the pH level. I have a little pH kit. I'm going to check the pH level and ideally it should be somewhere, somewhere between 4 and 5 is the ideal pH level. So I'm simply having a look here, give it a couple of seconds to actually take uh, effect. Yes that's actually looking like um, it's just reaching 5. So that's great, it's actually in the good pH level. A good pH range, so I don't need to adjust the pH at all. Now, if I did have to bring the pH level down, I would have used citric acid. That would have reduced the pH level until it came to a more comfortable, uh, comfortable zone. Now, I'm going to put something else in before I put the yeast. This is a product called diammonium phosphate. This is a yeast nutrient. And just putting the yeast into sugar is not going to allow it to get busy and do its job. Right, so you need to actually give the yeast the nutrient, the trace elements which it needs to actually do a good job. And I'm putting one teaspoon full of diammonium phosphate into there and uh, giving it a bit of a stir. That's going to be sufficient when the yeast starts to activate properly and has grown to its maximum potential. That's going to give it enough to give it a vigorous start. And uh, yeah, that's what we're after. Now, contrary to what you may have saw a little bit earlier, uh, yes I did put an extra 5 kilos of sugar in. I did test the um, specific gravity and uh, it showed me it was running a little bit short. So I put another kilo of sugar in and that's going to give us a potential uh, alcohol volume of around about 15-16%. So um, I'll be happy with that and I'll be very anxious to see if the corn and the barley is actually going to give me uh, a flavour difference, so exciting news. Okay, I'm going to put in my yeast nutrient now. I think I've done everything I need to do. Just going to pour it in and start whisking it in. Give it a little bit of a thing here. We don't want to actually leave any of the yeast behind. So that's good, that's effective. But while that's happening, what I might do is I might um, take, photo, take a, a video of this so you can see what's happening. So I'll just start this game. You can see down here. 
bit of foam on top. I'm just giving it a little bit of a whisk to actually incorporate that yeast foam in with the mix that I have in the bucket here. That's about done. I'll give it a stir from the bottom and nearly time to put this to bed. It's been a long time coming. As you can see outside, it's getting on. It's around about 8.30 at night and dark. And uh, it's been a long haul to get to this stage. I don't know whether it's going to be worthwhile yet. I'm going to find out. Um, so this brings the, um, the, uh, the, the wash side of this uh, video to a close. Um, I'm going to wait 7, 14, 21 days now and uh, then I will actually do uh, another video on the distillation. Now, anybody who's seen any of my other videos will know that I actually use a reflux con. Uh, well, I'm not going to do it this time. I actually have a pressure cooker pot still and I'm going to be using that. The main reason being it gives me around about an 80% alcohol by volume mix but it also introduces and retains a lot of the flavours. So um, I was doing this for flavour so I want to see what's going to happen. So looking forward to that. Alright so you can see this being put to bed in a second. So I've got uh, a lid secure that down in place. What I will be doing later, I will be taking off one of these heater bands. I just wish to retain the heat for a while. I'll be um, putting this into um, the laundry and putting it to bed. As a, um, I'll just excuse me while I go out of frame and put some water in the, the the uh, airlock. So the airlock is ready. We don't want any foreign bodies to get in there. So it's very exciting. Put it to bed. So um, hopefully uh, I'll be giving you an update, updated report very very shortly and uh, I'll be posting this to YouTube and following it with part two, uh, the distillation via the pot still. Um, hopefully maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks time. Been a long haul but we're there and we just have to wait for it to do its job.